Okay, so we just finished. We just finished lyric poetry. So now we're going to move on to narrative poetry. Narrative of poetry. What's the big subcategory of narrative poetry? You got it in ninth grade. Real long poem. Pardon? The what? An epic poem. And so one of the big, um, one of the very large subgenres is the epic poem. So you had to read, of course, the Odyssey. You've got the Iliad. We've got uh, what you're going to be reading two years from now, which is Beowulf. So epic poems are really important because a lot of times in uh, ancient histories you didn't have a lot of literate people and so the epic poem kind of taught you what your culture was. So the Odyssey and the Iliad were these great stories of these Greek heroes and they taught you what it was to be Greek. And in the same way Beowulf kind of teaches you what it's like to be a Dane or an English, an old English person, right? what values you have, what uh, things the culture feels is important are taught through uh, the epic poem. Like, for example, the Greeks were one of the first races, well, they thought they were one of the first races to abandon human sacrifice, right? They found human sacrifice a disgusting thing because it was a waste of a perfectly good human being, right, which you don't want. So there's other narrative poems as well, and usually these tell a story of some sort, unlike lyric poetry that usually talks about a concept or an emotion. Um, what we're going to look at today is Out Out by uh, Robert Frost, which is a famous narrative poem that tells a short story. And it's told all in something that you will be quizzed on later called Blank verse. Now what is blank verse? Well, blank verse has no rhyme. But it has a iambic pentameter. It has an iambic pentameter uh, meter. Okay. And this is very uh, characteristic, I'd say even idiosyncratic, of Frost. He uses this constantly. And there aren't a lot of poem, there aren't a lot of poets that use blank verse. If they use blank, they use I am contaminator, they usually go another step and they do use the rhyme. But uh, uh, Robert Frost, he does use this blank verse quite a bit. So let's go over and look at Out Out. Hope you'll be able to read this. Okay, Out Out. Now this is also based on something you'll read in, in English 4, which is Macbeth. So Macbeth, it says in the document here, but Macbeth, um, his wife is killed towards the end, or she commits suicide towards the end of the story. And... Macbeth says, out, out, brief candle. You know, that's the story of a human life. It's full of um, sound and fury signifying nothing. Okay, that the human life, it's, you know, once it's over, you look back at it, and it seems like it's out so quickly. So, out, out. Um, the buzzsaw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and drop stove-length sticks of wood. Now, notice each one of these is I am Pentameter, right? The buzz saw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and dropped off stove length sticks of wood. So every line is ten syllables long. Sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it. And from there, those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset far into Vermont. And the saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled, as it ran tight or had to bear a load, and nothing happened. The day was all but done. Call it a day, I wish they might have said, to please the boy by giving him the half hour. 
that a boy counts so much when saved from work. His sister stood beside him in her apron to tell them supper. At that word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leapt out of the boy's hand, or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However it was, neither refused the meeting. But the hand, the boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh, as he sprung up towards them, holding up the hand, half an appeal, but half as if to keep the, lo the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all. Since he was old enough to know, big boy, doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let them cut my arm off, or my hand off. The doctor, when he comes, don't let him, sister. So, but the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. You know what ether is? It's a drug that puts you to sleep. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath, and then the watcher at his pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened to it at his heart. Little, less, nothing, and that ended it. No more to build on there, and they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. Okay, so that's a look at Out Out, and the ending is very kind of like the last two lines is almost sardonic in how kind of sarcastic it looks at life. Like everyone just kind of like, ah, eh, he's dead, right? And so they're just going to turn away from the, yeah, he's a dead boy, whatever, right? There's no sadness or sorrow to it. Um, it's seen as just very kind of, um, what's the word, objective, almost hyper-objective, where they're just looking at the boy. His arm got cut off. Oh, he's dead. Oh, well. So, and it starts off very kind of whimsical with the, talking about the five mountain ranges, one behind each other, under the sunset far into Vermont. Um, and that's very characteristic Robert Frost, where he starts you off very kind of soft and wonderful, and then you kind of delve into some really strange story that he has for you. So that's out, out. And you've got this uh, question, so questions to answer right here. Go ahead and open it up and answer those questions. Uh, for your vocab, or sorry, for your quiz, your quiz is going to be on the vocab, the lyrical poetry. So watch the presentation uh, on lyric poetry if you need to review. And the poems that we went over the last week. Also, the structure of the sonnet will be quizzed upon. So you need to know 14 lines. You need to know Elizabethan and Italian sonnets. You need to know it's an iambic pentameter. And you need to know the difference between the observation part and then the reflection part of the sonnet. So in an Italian sonnet, the first eight lines are observation, the last six are reflection. In um, Elizabethan, the first 12 lines are observation, the last two, the foot, are reflection. Um, so you also need to have read Claude McKay's The Harlem Dancer, as well as uh, To Winter, and then Make sure, how many of you completed the sonnet already? One person. Two, three. You did it. Okay. So that's good. All right. So that's it.